Yeah. No, I just. And you can you can mention Ethan's here. No, I'll do worry. that. Yep. Yep. It's Ethan Palmer, in case you forgot. I'm, I'm recording that. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, hello, hello world. Um, it's Dana Viz Bob here. Uh, today, I actually have an audience. Uh, that I used to have zero people in the audience. Now I have my dad, Stepmom, and Ethan. What's your surname? Palmer. Ethan Palmer, who is a local reporter for, uh, for, for, for who? The Daily Sun newspaper. The Daily Sun newspaper. So we have a very distinguished audience today. And where are we? We're at the, um, the, where are we? Hold on, hold on, don't tell me. I, I think I can remember. It's something like the, the beach. Sea breeze. The sea breeze. <laughs> the sea breeze recreation center at the villages in central Florida. Yes, so we, we're very thankful to them. We're th very thankful to them for letting us use this amazing, amazing whiteboard, which is, as I mentioned previously, better than the one in my office. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get one of these bad boys when I get back. Um, so today is going to be an attempt to summarize a fancy algorithm. It's called the fast volume rendering using a shear warp factorization of the viewing transform or the shear warp factorization algorithm. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a quick and convenient summary and this video is dedicated to Al Mahasna again. Uh, congratulations, Al, to be the first student to get two uh, videos. Um, this is on the topic of volume visualization, in particular ray casting. So I think it would be good to look at the video prior to this on the comparison between ray tracing and ray casting before watching this one. So this does fall into the category of fast ray casting. So it's a fast ray casting algorithm. It's to take the general, the generic ray casting algorithm and make it as fast as possible. That's the whole point. Okay, so let's look at the basic steps. It's not gonna have all the detail. Uh, we want this to be sort of short and convenient, but it will have, I'll try to summarize the main steps and then when you actually read the paper or read the book chapter on this topic, it will make a lot more sense. It will be a lot easier. So we're going to go through sort of four steps. One, two, three, four. So the first picture is supposed to be a, a schematic picture of generic ray casting. So this is the observer. This is what we call image space. That's the screen that the observer is looking at, the computer screen, right? And this is the volume data. So what happens in ray casting is for every pixel in the image, the red, green, blue, and alpha values are computed, right? By casting a ray, I'm gonna to try to draw a straight line from image space into object space. Now when the ray hits the volume, it samples the volume, right? Using some sort of ray sampling technique, right? So it's collecting information and data about the volume along the rays in the, in the, in the volume. Now this, so what happens is there's an interpolation. So if I want to collect the data at this location, there's an interpolation of the data samples around, surrounding this, this, this sample, and the same here, the same here, the same here, the same here. I've drawn a, a blown up view of, of this particular voxel here with the ray coming in. Now, the, 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 the observation is that this is, ex, this is an expensive computationally operation. So every time we sample the volume data, there's an interpolation. If we sample the volume data at the center of a voxel, there's an interpolation between four vertices in 2D or eight vertices in 3D, right, which is computationally expensive. 
and we may do that repeatedly along the way. So the question is, can we somehow accelerate that process? And that's what this is about, to accelerate that process and make the computation simpler. So somebody very smart, I don't know who, but somebody very smart noted that one possibility is to change the viewpoint. So change the, change the viewpoint so it's, it's orthogonal to the direction of the data, right? So, or the Z, the, the Z direction of the data. So now, when we cast a ray into the volume, it's, we can sample the volume at regular intervals. And that avoids this complicated and expensive interpolation, which amounts to seven interpolations in three dimensions. So it avoids that, that complicated, uh, costly computation. So what we're, what we're doing is we're setting up, by, by transforming the viewpoint, we're setting up a one-to-one -one ratio between pixels and voxels. And this is the key idea behind the acceleration. As soon as we set up this one-to-one -one ratio between pixels and voxels, we can accelerate the whole ray casting algorithm. So the consequences of this are fast interpolation and fast comp compositing. So what is compositing? That's just the stage where we add up the colors and opacities of all the data samples we collected along the ray. So when we add up all the the, the RGB alpha values, we get a resulting RGB alpha value in image space. So that's a view transformation, right, to get the, the Im image space orthogonal to object space. In the paper, that's called a permutation matrix. So the paper uses some very fancy terminology because the authors that wrote it are very smart. Um, that's so this is the, the premise, that's step one of the algorithm. But if we look, if we look at these two things, this viewpoint has changed, right? But we want to be able to visualize the data at any view, not just the views that are orthogonal to, to, the, to the object space. So how do we make that happen? Well, that's what the shear part is about. That's in the paper. This is called a shear operation, or sheared object space. So, to get the equivalent picture, we have to take the, the slices of data are are numbered from one, two, three, four, five, six. So, I've I've numbered them again in the sheared object space, right? So, to get the equivalent picture, we we shear the object space data, right? And we cast a ray into the data. And then we get the same viewing angle as we did in this case scenario. I've tried to draw to make it clear. So you can imagine if we look at slice one and we look at where the data is sampled, it's supposed to be the same location on the slice in both images. If we look at like, for example, slice six, we take a data sample from the, from the right side. So you can see the correspondence there, right? There's supposed to be a correspondence between the data samples here and here. And that's how we get the equivalent view of the data or the equivalent data sampling in, in and after we do the view transformation, right? And that's the shear operation. It's called S sheared object space in the paper. And then there's one final step. And that's what I call, personally, I call it the unshear. We have to then unshear we have to perform the inverse of this operation in image space. 
and this is this is sort of difficult to draw. There are some images of, of it in the paper. But basically, the resulting image from this projection is a little bit distorted. So the final step is to unshear the image and, and correct the distortion. And that's what we're trying to, that's what I'm trying to draw on this last step. In the paper, this is this is notated with M warp. In in my conceptual view of the world, it's it's the unshear operation. And essentially, it, it's very innovative, and essentially it's the way I think of it is it's viewing the whole world of ray casting from the, the ray, a ray-centered point of view. So everything is changing to make the ray as happy as possible, right? The data is changing, the view is changing to make this ray casting operation as simple and as fast as possible. So that is a quick and convenient summary of the shear warp factorization algorithm. It was first presented at a conference called ACM SIGGRAPH in 1994. Um, I've only been to the SIGGRAPH conference once, and that was in 2014 in Vancouver. A friend of mine named Mashuda Glencross invited me there to teach a data viz class at the conference. Thank you very much, Mashuda, for that invitation. I still appreciate that. I had a very great time at that, at that conference. And I remember um, there was a professor from Cardiff University in the audience of the, of the class at the conference. His name is Paul Rosen. And, and Paul gave me a tip before that said, I'm going to go, you know, visit your lecture. And um, he said, but I'm going to sit in the back so that nobody, you don't call and, and ask any uh, questions. Anyway, um, I'm just rambling now. Um, thanks, thanks again, everybody. If you have any questions or if there are any comments or if you saw any mistakes, please let me know. Thanks for your attention.